As anticipation of an imminent ground war in Gaza mounts, tonight the U.S. reaffirming its commitment to Israel. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin, the latest top official to travel there. The United States will make sure that Israel has what it needs to defend itself. Meeting with Arab leaders in Qatar, Secretary of State Antony Blinken urging Israel to avoid as many civilian casualties as possible. We continue to discuss with Israel the importance of taking every possible precaution to avoid harming civilians. While back home, President Biden spoke virtually today with families of the 14 Americans who remain unaccounted for. It's gut-wrenching. I assured them my personal commitment to do everything possible, everything possible to return every missing American to their families. Abby Owen called that conversation very emotional. I first met her on Monday, anxiously awaiting word on five family members after Hamas gunmen attacked their home. And right now all we care is that they come home safely. Now she says the Israeli government has confirmed two of them are hostages, Carmela Dan and her 13-year-old granddaughter, Noya. My immediate reaction was, I don't know how to react. And my later reaction is, continued optimism and hope because it means they're alive. She says Noya has special needs. From what I understand, during the Hamas attack on the house, uh, she didn't know what was going on, which is even more terrifying in a sense because she needs special attention and special care, and I'm positive that she's not getting it. A team of U.S. officials is in Israel to help with efforts to free the hostages. I feel reassured by the actions of the U.S. government. Did you get any incl inkling from um, Secretary Blinken yesterday about how far the U.S. will go to secure the release? The only thing that I, I feel like I should say is that every option is on the table. For other families, immense relief, tearful reunions as loved ones return from Israel, and the first State Department charter flights evacuating Americans taking off today. But for those who remain, life may never be the same. At a school in Herzliya, north of Tel Aviv, we found beds crammed into every corner. It's where I met a tight-knit group of Americans who converted to Judaism and moved to Israel years ago. They fled their homes in Ashkelon after the area was pounded by rocket attacks. Missiles are striking around yes. where you live. Nikia Brown captured the bombardment in chilling video she shared with me. Did you feel you were in constant danger? Yes, we experienced missiles going over our heads. <laughs> so at this moment, my friend sees missiles in the sky, and then we hear the alarm and we run. Traumatizing. Oh my goodness. Traumatizing. No shelter. We were trying to find a shelter. I I see a shelter here. We duck inside because you can hear the bombs. Bomb shelter, bomb shelter, come on. Come on, here's a bomb shelter. This is the kind of indiscriminate damage and danger Nikia and the rest of the group have fled from. This was their neighborhood in Ashkelon, and right here at this building, a neighbor lost his life in a missile attack. They say Herzliya has welcomed them with open arms. Here, their children can draw, blow bubbles, act like kids again. Are the kids seem to be doing better now? It, as soon as they got here, everybody smiles, running back and forth, playing with toys. Yeah. yeah but being here, you can see smiles on their faces again, so that's a beautiful thing.